We spoke about state ownership. Mm -hmm. So we heard the more right wing and the left wing, the interventionists, those who don't like to intervene. What's your take on this? If you bear in mind that the UK did its privatization in the 1980s, or at least the process started, Thatcher, British Telecom, British Gas, British Airways, TSB, all these things that were, that were sold off. What is the long-term benefit of having a telecoms company owned by the government, an airline owned by the government, when there are very many different avenues to achieve the same result, such as regional routes? Yeah. So you'll be arguing to basically do a case-by-case -case analysis of each firm on a given point. No, I think you've got, you can't do it on a case-by-case -case firm. Basis. I think if you start on a case-by-case -case basis, you end up picking winners and losers. Yep. I think you have to do it on a philosophical basis, that the general view is no, or yes, I'm not taking a view, but that we will change that view where these conditions are met. Great. And where those conditions are met, you then say we have to reconsider our, 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 on a wider issue. Yeah. Many people look up to Norway, especially what some people define as the Norwegian or the Nordic Scandinavian model of doing business. Many people idolize it almost. Is there any truth in exporting this to other countries? The okay. middle way. The, no, the, the middle way, between the, mid the Norwegian, Norwegian way and the local way. Well, no, but I mean, you know, this idea of uh, you can have, you have a, a, a fundamentally a capitalist economy yes. that is tempered with the, uh, the, the, the social democracy or the socialism of, 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 of running a country. The welfare side. Yes. Right. And I think it is best epitomised by flexible security. The companies can hire and fire, so they have the ability to remain competitive in the workforce, but at the same time there is a, a, a decent safety net for those that are booted out. But Norway is unique. Yeah. Norway, you know, people talk about the magnificent economy of Norway. People talk about the great situation that Norway's in. Norway is in this situation for one reason and one reason only. You tell me what that reason is. Oil, natural resources. Exactly. Take away those oil and natural resources and what position is Norway in? Going back to 1960. Exactly. With a little bit better conditions. Exactly. Right? Due to investment in some engineering knowledge extreme. Exactly. Right? It's very advanced engineering knowledge. Exactly. So the test and the the, the, the issue for Norway is handling the post-natural resources, the post-fossil fuel industries. I think we're in total agreement there. The challenge is how to actually make that transference. And I think you try to challenge the finance minister whether she's actually doing the right job in making that transition today. It's very difficult because the minister knows she's got to do it. They're under no illusion. Nobody who sits in Stuart and, or in, in government has, is under any illusion that they have to do it. In the same way that in Qatar, the Emir knows he has to have a post-natural resources. And Dubai knows that, uh, um, Saudi Arabia knows it. I mean, Norway does not have, Norway does not have the most natural gas and oil in the world. No. But it has the largest sovereign wealth fund. Yes. The reason, of course, is that the correct husbanding of those resources. A, clear strategic policy of investment in certain areas coupled with a limitation on the expenditure of the income up to four percent yes yeah which they have done that because they learned a little bit from the netherlands right that what happened there in uh, the 70s when they get oil and then spend it and inflation went up so they actually learn and one thing to be said about norway is that they actually do strategic investments yes they think long term short term fluctuations do not really change their long-term goals. When Israel discovered or realized it might have natural gas off the coast, the first place they came to for advice, uh, on the advice of the governor of the bank, was Norway. Because they knew, they knew that money was going to flow in. And as one senior Israeli official told me, we knew we had to lock it up before somebody wanted to spend it. And that's Norway's great success.